Welcome back and what we're going to do in this lesson is to figure out how we can calculate electric flux through a surface and also get introduced to the concept of area as a vector. So we will use the most often used analogy of comparing electric flux with flowing water. However, you must remember that the only difference in this comparison of electric flux and flowing water is that while water actually moves with say velocity v, the flux does not move. So if we have a setup like this where water is flowing through this area A with velocity v, we say that the volumetric flow rate of water is dv upon dt which is equal to v times A. And why we take VA on the right hand side is that we know that in one second, say all molecules of water in this section of water should have moved V meters to the right, thereby moving a volume equal to V meters by area A. So VA volume has effectively moved in one second, hence the volumetric flow rate is V A. But let's say if we tilt this rectangle by an angle alpha such that the face is no more perpendicular to the velocity vector V, what we find is that the relevant area through which water is now going through is not this anymore but is this. So if you keep increasing angle alpha, the flow of water through the area keeps decreasing till it becomes zero when the rectangle is parallel to the flow of water or the velocity vector v. So if we agree that the water flows through this area only which is clearly less than a and is actually equal to a cos alpha since while the length of the original rectangle is still the same the other side has reduced by a factor of cos alpha. So if the original length was L and the breadth was B, the B value is now actually just B cos alpha while L is still the same. So the new area you get is L B cos alpha which you see is equal to A cos alpha. So now you could say that the new volumetric flow rate is equal to V multiplied by the new area that is A cos alpha or you could say dV upon dt is equal to V A cos alpha. Well, you could also say that the relevant area through which water is passing is the projection of area A onto a surface that is perpendicular to V. So you see using this formula, you can see that the flow rate is maximum when alpha is zero since cos alpha becomes one. And if you make alpha equal to 90 degrees, cos alpha becomes zero and dv upon dt equals zero, which is true since the water is just running parallel to the area now rather than going through it. So going forward you need to know that when we deal with flux we use the concept of area vectors yes area can also be a vector what we do is we say that a is a vector with magnitude a and direction that is perpendicular to the plane we are discussing that is a itself so with this as the idea, that is area A being a vector, we can then rewrite this equation as dV upon dt is equal to V dot A or a dot product of velocity vector V and area vector A. Well, we could use pretty much the same analogy to describe electric flux. So all you need to do is use vector E in place of V and the symbol we use for electric flux is phi with E in the subscript. So if you consider this as the area through which field lines are passing, the electric flux can be defined as phi is equal to E times A 
and if you increase the area A, you will have more field lines passing through it and the flux increases or you could keep the area the same and increase the intensity of electric field and in that case also the flux increases. Now, like we did earlier when we were considering water through the rectangle, if we tilt the same rectangle, what we find is fewer field lines passing through it. So the area that becomes relevant is this or the projection of A that is perpendicular to vector E. This area we know is A cos alpha. We can then write the equation for electric flux as phi is equal to Ea cos alpha. So once again we see that if alpha becomes 90 degree, no electric field line passes through the rectangle and the flux becomes zero. So we can now rewrite this equation as electric flux is equal to the dot product of electric field E and the area vector through which it is passing and this area vector is perpendicular to the actual plane of area under consideration. And of course, we also need to remember that this equation is valid for a uniform value of E and the area here is a flat surface. Let us also keep in mind some conventions we'll be using when we work around Gauss's law. So when we deal with closed surfaces like this, the area vector could point in this direction, but could very well point in this direction as well. So the convention we'll have is that the area vector will always point out of the surface for any closed surface we consider. So with this convention, what you'll notice is that if you have the field vector pointing in outward direction, the angle between area vector and the field vector E will be zero and cos alpha will become one. So the flux will be positive. However, if the field vector is piercing the surface inwards, the angle between the area vector and the field vector is 180 degrees, which would make cos alpha equal to minus one. And therefore the flux becomes negative. And finally, if the field vector is just skimming the surface, the angle between vector A and E would be 90 degrees, making the flux zero. So to sum up, an inward piercing field is a negative flux and outward piercing field is a positive flux and field that skims the surface has zero flux value. Well, it's all fine for regular surfaces like this, but is it true for irregular surfaces as well? So the answer is that even if we take an irregular Gaussian surface like this, and yes, going forward, we'll refer to such surfaces as Gaussian surfaces. So uh, the, the answer is that even if we take such a surface or a Gaussian surface, the above statement would still hold true. So you can see this surface where the field is piercing it, the flux would be negative. But here where the field is coming out of the surface, the flux would be positive. And out here where the field is skimming the surface and the angle between the vector A and uh, the field is 90 degrees, the flux is zero. Now, while it may be easy to find flux or surfaces where we have a box under consideration, to find flux through irregular surfaces like this, where you will need to start is take a very small piece of area DA and do a dot product with the field vector that passes through it. So if this area has electric field passing into it, dot product would be negative and so will be the flux value. And if the area DA has field passing out of it, the dot product would be positive and therefore the flux as well. So if we add up the flux value for all such DA areas across the surface, we can find the total flux through the surface. Well, we know it is impossible to do this without using integral calculus. And so we do an E dot DA for each small area and simply integrate it over the area get the net flux.
Now the loop here should not worry you. All it means is that you should do integration over the entire surface or more correctly entire closed surface to get the net flux and we call this a surface integral. Again, remember we wish to find the net flux through the surface due to an enclosed charge because that is what Gauss's law relates to with the charge inside the surface and you'll get more clarity on this in the next lesson. And finally make one more note that flux is a scalar and has magnitude only and no direction. This is essentially because we are measuring the amount of field piercing a surface, not the field itself that is a vector. So in the next lesson, we'll finally learn how Gauss's law relates to the net flux through the surface and the value of charge inside the surface. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more exciting videos.